Billy loves a heel. Ric Flair. Mm -hmm. Vader. Like, was my guy. I worked for WCW. No, duh, because he named one of our dogs after Vader. <laughs> He's the only man that ever ran you me know, out of a I, dressing room. I grew up going, oh, Vader? Was he named after Darth Vader? And me and my little six-year-old self would go, no, Big Van Vader. Because right. Philly loves the heels. Young Junk! Delco in the house. I'm trying to be serious, and I have Many Sean, in the house. and now I have Dr. Caitlin. Many young I'm, in the house. I'm looking directly at I'm your camera. I'm officially 30. Like, I'm too old for this. Fuck, I forgot! Oh, my God! Happy birthday! I'll Thanks, let those Sean. two talk. Now keep going, you and That's Louie. That's I completely forgot about that. Oh, Hi. Oh, my. Steven wait, wait, here. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, Steve. Oh, oh, setting the record straight at the young junk. Oh, my Oh, no. Lord. Keep, keep, keep talking, pay, you know, you knuckleheads. Yes, who's bad? Paying attention. Back so here's what again. we're doing. You guys are probably tuning in, all eight of you. Maybe nine. We got Sean here today. But you're tuning in, you're going, where's the Wheatley vodka bottle? Oh, Stephen drank the Wheatley. No, I did not. D dear friends, dearly departed. What's that line in Prince? I can't even hear it. I can hear the organ. I just want to say, Wheatley vodka, we appreciate everything that you've done. And keep it up, because you're the greatest sponsor on the planet. You've let me do me. You let us show us. It, it was it was kind of an issue having that bottle right there. It's right there. Because we wanted to drink the vodka the whole time. As we film, it's Monday night. We're doing uh, $3 Wheatley drinks, $5 Wheatley mules at La Roca. So we thank you very much. And I would like to, at this time... Reach out to you. I'm looking at you right in the cat. Come here. Come on. A little, 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 little bit close. Right there, right there. Right there. Right there. I apologize now. I have Sean from my friendship. And I have Caitlin from Your <laughs> Dr. Oh, City. I'm just Dr. saying. Caitlin. Dr. Caitlin. Dr. Caitlin. Back to the podcast. So we appreciate you very much. Caitlin passed her boards. Woo! You heard the last one. She wasn't, she was nervous. She drank a lot. Got shitty the night before the podcast. Yeah, but, and she graduated rehab in one day. They said she failed. That's kind of graduation That's to kind me of graduation in my life. If you, you know, I mean, I, I think rehab's for quitters in, in a theory, you know, in theory that way. But anyway. We're just going to get back to normal and say we are sponsored by Wheatley. And I thank you very much, Wheatley, for everything that you do and that you've released. You've relaxed some of the, the uh, restrictions. My favorite moment of the week after the last podcast was Dylan. Dylan, just yell, yo, real loud. Dylan, yell, yo. See, I don't know if you heard him. That's He's very soft spoken. Dylan texts Dylan me. Dylan has a microphone. Oh, my bad, homies. Dylan texts me, he goes, yo, I know you're being really good. You're trying to pay attention to the to the sponsors, but you're wearing another brand's alcohol. Uh, I like the logo. What are you going to do? And I told Wheelie that. The beautiful thing the, about the, Wheelie's is that they don't put handcuffs on you. Wheelie's is dude, all about that's the where brand. we are. Let, now, Wheelie's is all about letting Sean, you know. Sean, my like, brother, Caitlin, my doctor. Thank you, you guys, both we, in we, here. We but Wheelies is what's so cool, bro. They, they, they want to get the product out there, and they know that the support for the product is out you've there. You've been okay? in the business a they're long not, time. They're not being. They're not handcuffing you. No, they're not saying this is what you got to do. They're saying no. we believe in you because obviously these darker color. And we'll, we'll do half. I don't know to start. This is obviously not possibly Wheatley vodka. I like my shots. I like my men, bro. It, it is what it is. Jesus God, someone help me. Hey, Lynn. Dr. Caitlin. <laughs> How has your week been since? No, not week. Days. Tell us the anxiety level well, look, leading up to and then the euphoria that was displayed let's, after. Let's talk the biggest about change. from uh, last week's filming until now. I got meaner and sadder as the days went on. <laughs> yeah. By Wednesday, I don't think anyone wanted to be my bar guest. 
I disagree with that. I I, I oh, know at least no. one guy. I, you, you know, you, you know, I have filmed. You I know how he didn't right. want anyone to be my bar guest? He put me in the kitchen instead. <laughs> he said, don't, don't let her near the general public. She's pretty miserable right now. And we prepped before she got there. So she was going to make everyone's food nice. Well, that I was wasn't taking chances. I was kind of sad, very anxious, and he gave me a knife. So Right. So good, good times. <laughs> I remember well, one you time have I a mother in. and I have a life insurance policy. <laughs> I was 50 50 I was gonna make out I remember Same. one time I came in and it was one of those times where you know like we all deal with in this business 14 people call out and you do what you gotta do and uh, Dr. Caitlin was back there with a large uh, chef knife and I believe you were making either Pico or I was, I was making, making Pico because you complimented my knife skills. Absolutely. I said, that's a great bias you're putting on there. And, and, but it was funny because as I'm talking to you at the end of the kitchen, you know, it's like, yes, exactly. And I was like, I don't want to be on the other end of that knife ever. <laughs> I think Lorena Bob had taught everybody well. Like you know, she doesn't wanna... even know who do you know who Lorena... I I do. Thank you very much. You did raise like a pretty cultured child here. Dylan, please pause this because now I need to just go put a band-aid on for no apparent reason. <laughs> just because I'm scared. Dude, I, I was listening like that was back in the days of Howard Stern when he was still asleep. Because apparently he's now so well. I don't know what he's the hell he is. Woke, but, guess, but, so but that was back in the day, and I loved Howard back in the day. And I'm like, John Wayne Bobbitt. Then they did the whole, uh, oh, let's, let's be careful. They did the whole pay-per-view special around it. But and then Bongo he did Fiesta. The New oh, but Bongo Fiesta was amazing. The New Year's Eve special was good. We won't go into that again. If it wasn't a New Year's Eve special, Caitlin's like, whatever. Okay, I know I'm a New Year's Eve baby. You we are. Make that no. Well, yeah, but John but Wayne Bobbitt, good like God, man. Are either of them still relevant he did porn he did porn apparently people he did short for porn. the scar well, i think he did well, i think he had to short because there was some chopped out <laughs> dylan would be like hey dylan, i'm doing that, i'm doing i'm doing john wayne bobbitt's podcast but i'm gonna do shorts and i'm gonna put like knives cutting sausage cutting hot like i could oh my god you know you know what's awesome about dylan dylan's dylan's the second best producer in the industry uh -oh. behind jamie from joe rogan but Dylan will actually pull up right now what John Bobbitt's doing in life because I mean we 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 were obviously inquiring minds want to know Lorena Bobbitt who who gives a shit what the hell she did but John Wayne Bobbitt like I'd like to know like what he's doing with his life I mean you know he's pulling it up in front of us not like we're not supposed to be distracted but he's like oh let me just show these knuckleheads dude how did we get he started is now on unable to work after his Toe, toe amputation. amputation. So he would, but wait, you know the best part about that is he, he was unable to work after his toe. toe amputations, but apparently he was empowered to work after his. This is not well, going it well. Sounds like amputation. John Wayne Bobbitt bum, bum. needs some occupational therapy to teach him how Dr. to Caitlin. live his life after toe amputations. Doctor Caitlin Wheatley, one more time, I would like to apologize this time because we still have some time left. And I'm here with Sean and Dr. Caitlin, and I just know that this is not oh, going to go well. Let's. It's a new decade. I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm just so, about to be so really we're weird. We're filming on a Monday. Uh, Phillies. We were talking sports last week. Yeah. Caitlin and I. The, the greatest holiday to me, I love Halloween, yada, yada, yada. But one of the greatest sports holidays is Halloween because you have. Flyers, Sixers, about this, yeah. uh, Eagles. Eagles, and if the Phillies the are doing good, potential, potential, and they're not. Yeah, but like, them. if the Phillies are doing good, you have the Phillies. And Absolutely. for the past couple of years, we've had the Phillies. We're and not going to get into this whole Phillies thing this year. Fire the manager, or keep the manager. I, Just the I, manager. I, the no, no, see, I, I, I like Rob Thompson. I, I, I didn't I, ask that. I, no, no. And this, this is what did he play? Ro did he play bone here, in that here, final here's, game? Here's the problem I have with Rob Thompson. Okay, this will take a is, while. I think he's one of those. He's a player's manager. Okay, now listen. Charlie was a player's manager. Okay, people love playing for Charlie. The difference was is that Charlie worked on so many different levels. He got the best out of everybody. When I watched what the Phillies just did in, in, in that playoff run with, with the Mets, I mean, and I'm not going to go individualistic because, because, listen, everybody can be criticized for everything. What I'm going to say is I didn't see Hart on that field. I saw Hart for about a half hour in game two. Okay, other than that, what I saw was guys who were going through so is motion. So he, is he responsible for part of that Hart? 
no. Thompson? No. Well, let me ask you this. The manager's About a week and a half, I forget, because here we are, uh, the 14th of yeah, October. $300 million dollars invested when, in those four when your, players. When your $300 million player doesn't run the ball out and you don't publicly sit him, are you holding him accountable? And I don't care that Harper apologized to the team. I don't care what happened in the clubhouse. I feel that he, uh, Thompson, they call him Topper, whatever. Topper. Uh, I, was he holding him accountable? Check this out. 16 years ago, Philadelphia Phillies, 2008. What a great team. I think, I, I, and I think this was the Electric year. In the city, and bro. who does not run out the ball and gets benched the next day? J-Roll. J-Roll did not run out of ball, got benched publicly the next day, as Harper should have. two years removed from MVP. No, that was his MVP season. I thought he was, seven, I thought he was 2006. No, we won in eight. We lost to the Yankees in nine. We won in eight. J-Roll, that's when J-Roll won, isn't it? Pretty I, sure. I, I came out. I, mean, I knew it was like, I knew it was. When we beat Tampa Bay. When we beat Tampa, yeah, okay. whatever they well, won. I, no, I remember 08. But, Believe but, me, I but, remember 08. And, and again, and, and you know what? It almost doesn't matter which exact year it was. Yeah. The manager sat J-Roll down. Okay. And said, yeah, you're not running out the ball. And I think Castellanos got a, a pass because it was either the last game or the next to last game. Hit a fly ball all to right field, as he was always doing, and hit it and ran like a couple feet and then just squatted like, oh, man, that sucks. You know what sucks, dude? Steven, let me ask you a question. And, and me and you, I mean, we're a little bit older than Dr. Caton, all right? But me and you. 30 like, years old today as we film. It's her yeah. birthday, brother. Dr. Caitlin. So, listen. I like to consider myself an old school kind of guy. Yeah. Right? You know, I mean, I, I, I like the TikToks. I, I, I like the, I'm addicted. The, the Instagrams. I, don't I, watch. I like I like the new trends that are coming out. Yeah. You know, I put my hand up on your hip when I yeah, did, yeah. you dip. You did. That is such so, an old song. Please don't consider listen, that. Like I remember when that trend. song was out the first time and being in a Sean, club. You just aged yourself when now. you were in like eighth grade. The 94th Era exactly. Squadron up in Northeast Philadelphia Yo. on Red Line Yo, Road. R.I.P. 94th. The 94th. I mean, it, Dude, I love that $10 place. Happy oh hour, my okay? god. But, but but like I consider myself, you know, an old school kind of guy. All right. So like yeah, as much as I sit there and say like. I want somebody to run it out. Yeah, I want them to be desperate if they don't. You know, today's athletes don't do that stuff. You know, I, don't today, today's athletes, I don't care. I don't care. So, so care. let me ask you a question. Care. 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 Are you more concerned about the symbolic effort of benching somebody for not running something out? Or let's go to the other guy, Boom, who dropped a bone on everybody because he couldn't, he was aggressively hitting, trying to just make contact because he was so hyper conscious about him not producing anything that he was just making mistakes off the right let's look at the game in game three when he's sitting there trying to yeah, but he, Alec Brown ball hits him he should have double play but, he gets no outs because I mean, and they got out of the inning because let no me outs. give you something about Alec Boom. you don't have to worry about where that kid's emotions are he F's up and you know exactly yeah. Yeah, sitting in the effing dugout crying. Bunch of bitches. And his girlfriend on ESPN telling all her coworkers, leave him alone, leave right. him alone. Right. What a bitch. That's, that's what but, I'm saying. From the old school mentality, it's like, I, I can't even deal with that kind of shit these dude, days. Dude, I hate that. But here's the thing. You'd so we don't want to see Bohm crying in the dugout because he messes up, but then we get mad at Jalen Hurts because he shows no emotion. No emotion. And that is the Philly double standard that we he have. He showed less emotion that is than the Oprah Philly showed when she burned down Both. all of that land in Hawaii. Hey, I don't go political. Watch this. When Oprah burned down all that land in Hawaii up to her property line and thought, my, my, my outer hedges will look good singed, but we're going to stop the fire right there. And Bone gets away with shit. And but here's the thing. As... In Philly, and this we, is the end of our political statement, Oprah. In Philly, hate we her. hate a guy who is too emotional, and we simultaneously no, we don't. hate a guy who's no, we emotional. Don't. So, where were we the night that Bo made three errors against the New York Mets three years ago? We were in a suite. Thank you, Miller Lite. 
Cheers, brah. And Harper said, I Marty hate Fowler, playing Miller, 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 I hate playing in this effing place. And then the next night on ESPN, because we hated him all day on WIP, YSP, he said, I, 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 what I mean is because the fans are so passionate and it's so hard, you can't mess up. And all of a sudden, we gave him pass. We turned on the the heel persona. Let's talk about wrestling in the heels later on. But we turned on that and we embraced him because he fell on his sword. He made three errors. We were at the game, four to nothing in the eighth inning. And I'm telling everyone in our booth, let's go stay. It's free food. It's free alcohol. He's saying and, stay. And, I'm saying let's go. And I'm out of here. <laughs> and this new team could hit. We won five to four. All right. And that was the game that Bohm made three errors and said into his glove on national TV. I hate this place. So here's the thing. Philadelphia, we're emotional. Okay, we're emotional sports fans. We dive into it. We get into it. We support her, but tell me, tell me, Jalen Hurts is emotional. Wait, here's the thing. Well, this is what I'm he's we, emotionless. We hate the emotional player, and we hate the emotionless exactly. player. I think, exactly. I think when Jamie Fox got we cloned, he took Jalen Hurts. We are the ultimate dichotomy of a like a sports fan base. We hate dichotomy. A Dr. Caitlin word. Dichotomy. Dichotomy. <laughs> but we hate a player who is too emotional. We hate a player who wears their heart on their sleeve. But then we also hate a player who guards their heart. Hold on. Hold on. And, wait, wait, and wait, that wait. is. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because we are a rocky clientele. Okay. We love the people who love the, wear their emotional on their sleeve. Yeah. We want somebody to say, <laughs> You don't have to we, be great. We want that. But. What we do is we criticize when the effort For doesn't blue match collar the town. That's the difference, okay? Blue collar. And with Jalen Hurts, with Jalen Hurts, what I was getting back to before, and doctor, I apologize. I'm not trying to cut you off, okay? Because you well, are- Well, no, his effort and his emotions, they match. So, no so, effort, no yeah, emotion. This is what I want to say about Jalen Hurts, okay? Pop or on pop or whatever, okay? His emotions don't match his performance. Okay, what I want to see if the, we all, you know, it's you all have, Jason you have, you Kelsey's have fault. Scale, We're stunting his like growth. Whole idea, like but if 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 you know, with somebody's high I, versus I think it's crazy, the opposite, that, though. That, that like thing. his emotions match his effort. His emotions are high when his effort is high. If he has no effort and we lose, he shows no emotion. He doesn't have the only flying f. That makes me drink. But this is the, but, but what I'm saying is that we, but like, let's just go with the Jalen Hurts thing, okay? Listen, Jalen Hurts is talented. He, no doubt he's talented. Mentally. Guess, guess, guess what? When, 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 the, when the biggest talking point about your quarterback, your quarterback, I'm not your halfback, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, yeah. when the biggest thing about your quarterback is that he, he, he does the 600-pound squats, when that's your biggest thing that you got to say about your quarterback, not – his fast reads, not his accurate arm, not his uh, ability to see the field in different dimensions that nobody else can see. When when your uh, biggest thing you say about your quarterback is 600 pound squats and the tush push, you got the wrong guy quarterback. It's sure we quarterback can do a tush sneaks, push. by the way. It's different. The play is different. And I don't like to keep calling it a tush push or the brotherly shove, whatever. It's quarterback sneak. Uh, I, I I call it the tush push for no no I know you did no I know you did no 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 I know you did asinine play. Uh, well, they did it yesterday on third and one, and, and guess what? I'm Penn State. I love Saquon. Uh, there was the third down. There was a second down play, and he ran out of bounds. And instead of extending the ball, and it was third and one, and he would have gotten a first down. Still, just go out of bounds, and then it was third and one, and we got blown up on third down, and then. Uh, yeah, I don't care if they see me. And then, and then, I love Saquon, but he cost us that play. And I believe that that was the blocked field goal for a touchdown. But, but here's the thing, and, and Saquon is a talented guy. He was talented at Penn State. You know, when, when he came to the Eagles, I was always excited. And here's what I'll say about Saquon, is when he's – when he's like um, uh, squatting 575, yeah. 580, whatever it Where's is. That ACL yes, going? I want that to be up there. Yeah. Okay. Has Saquon, I'm a, controversial, uncontroversial, whatever. Has Saquon won us two games? One. Kind of? One. Kind of two? I'm trying to think what the other one. I know he, I knew he was great. Two. If kinda, they rely kinda, on him, kinda, no, kinda he's kind of two. That's okay. why he's but, killing. But, but, here, but here's the thing is that 
when, when you're sitting there and the biggest the thing you can say about your quarterback, your quarterback of the team is that they squat 600. That's not what I'm going to say again. It, it, it's, 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 my ne- it's never going to be something I'm going to sit there and talk about. So like we get to, you get back to coaching, you get back to managing with the Phillies with Rob Thompson. Wait, we'll can bring we, this all the way. Can we get back, back to the quarterback though? Can we get back to the quarterback? How do you get over saying, saying, Jason Kelsey stunted my learning. I'm looking at you right in the camera. How do you possibly say that? This guy did nothing but lead you and try to raise you up as a soldier. I know football is different than the Army, but it's got some similarities so, so, as so, far as leadership let me, let me ask in you a question. physical let me ask you a question, format. Okay? And, and, you know, and th- by the way, I know I've told you this before, but thank God for your fucking service to this country, okay? Yeah, no, because you don't talk soldier. about it enough, and I know you're only talking about it, but, but God, thank damn, you, brother. God damn you. Thank great you, brother. I love American, you. Okay? But let me ask you a question. If you got a captain yeah. who, who leads you into battle and says, Following get behind me. To the depths of earth. Get behind me. I'm going to fucking lead you to the promise I'm there. Line, okay? And I'm going to lead everybody that I can. Okay. Now let me ask you, let, let me put a second scenario to you. You got a captain who says, listen, I, 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 I've trained a lot at this and I, I'm going to work really hard to get you there. So, 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 so let me, let me try my best to lead you. Okay. And, and this is where I'm going to go with this with Cam yeah. Jurgens. Okay. Yeah. Cam Jurgens was brought in to be the, 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 the replacement for Jason Kelsey. When we all knew Jason Kelsey was eventually going to retire. Cam Jurgens when he was in college, he was a great freaking center. He was the best center coming out in his class, okay? Cam Jurgens learned for two years on that line. They pushed him into the guard position because they needed him to, okay? Cam Jurgens, okay, for two years, didn't play center. Now, oh, mind you, should that whole guard. time, almost every off-field opportunity be should made have to of say, ready. let me get him, let me get the steps let because I know ready. two years from now I'm going to get them? Yes, okay? Yeah. Is that going to happen? Yes, it will. Okay. But it didn't happen right away with everybody else. Jason Kelsey was a once in a lifetime type of guy. Jason Kelsey was the guy that comes along every now and then that sparks a special challenge in people that makes everybody around him better. Okay. And not because he was the most talented. It was because he was the hardest worker. He was the one that's going to say, get there behind me and I'm going to fucking lead you to the promise land. Cam Jurgens can get there. Cam Jurgens, I like Cam Jurgens, okay? But the problem with Cam Jurgens is, guess what? He's not Jason Kelsey. He's not. But nobody's Jason Kelsey. But they're Kelsey. not helping Jason him. Jason Kelsey's a first, a, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Jason Kelsey's going to stroll into the Hall of Fame as one of the greatest centers in the game. Not because of what he did for the one 2017 year. Not because of what he did, you know, with, with speeches or, or presence. Jason Kelsey's going to go into the Hall of Fame because Jason Kelsey was a leader. Jason Kelsey was the guy who said, get on my fucking back. I'm going to fucking walk you in there. People don't remember Jason Kelsey had long hair. He had the long hair. He had a mullet. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. And then you'd watch a play develop, and you'd be like, wait, where's all that hair? Downfield. Right. Like, he never stopped. Stop. His he motor was went. constantly That's going. That's a Philadelphia guy. Again, I know we're getting a little not off topic, but Jalen Hurts no, it gets doesn't back to have the same quite topic. that. It gets back to does, the same topic. Does Harper. Does get, Harper. So back to how we got here to begin with. Thompson. Did Thompson no, let that Alex shit happen? Bo- we'll, we'll go back to Alec Boehm was under is, that is, umbrella. Is, is, Alec, is Alec Boehm a Philly guy? Who's I'll say this. I'll a say Philly Bryce Harper is in the next week or two for Alec Halloween. Alec Boehm no is not no a Philly guy. No. Alec Boehm reminds me of those players that would come in LA. and sit there and say, you know, w- w- why is everybody booing me? I don't get this. I got Cole long, Hamels gorgeous, had a pretty California I white hair. I have, I have the face that can get me there. I'm young enough that everyone loves me. I have, wait, 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 I have a cool Alec roommate. Now yourself, yeah. right? okay. I have a cool roommate, uh, uh, Marsh. Yeah, and then hey, Mike is, uh, you guys saw our, you guys saw our TikToks, right? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. partying. Oh, in it. Listen, but listen. The, 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 girl, the, the girls bat. on the TikTok, they sit there and say, "Oh my god, I love this man. Oh my god, this guy is great." What does he really produce? He had three months, three months of production this year, three months leading up to the All Star break. From the All Star break on, what did that guy do? 
What did he really do to sit there and say, and to say I've arrived? I've grown it's finally weed my faster time. than three months. He's going to get a hundred twenty-five million dollar contract. Unnecessary of a commentary. No, from I'm just Steven, saying, Mom. My part pretty, one. Yeah. My point is, no, we're he, not too he, loud. He right? hasn't done anything. He hasn't done anything. Both of you and are Philly. always too Listen, loud me, anywhere wait, you are. Hear me together. out. Hear me out. And and I don't need Lou here for this. Lou, uh, wait, but wait, I, who, but I need this here for this. Lou? So who's Lou? Get ready. Lou who? Oh no! Oh, you, Lou, you don't know? Lou's who? So Lou who? who there's Lou? these things called ring rats. Okay. Oh, Bands God. have groupies. Uh-huh. Okay. And I've been lucky enough to be in a band that's had groupies. And wrestling. Call me daddy. Oh. No, everyone's gonna be dirty. And wrestling Can we has not ring rats. Do that? And Lou is basically a ring rat going, if that's a pro wrestler, I will throw all my morals hold out on, the window. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't care that. All right, all right, okay. all right. So, <laughs> so, as some of you may know, and no, I'm probably, going somewhere with And this. probably most do not. I really am. But um, I, I host a separate podcast that we're all currently on hiatus. Sorry, Dylan. Um, Sorry, Dylan. Called, uh, the Supper Club with uh, with Lewis Novak, who is a very good friend of mine, and um, and we 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 love talking about Philadelphia. Are you sponsored by Wheelie? No, I'm just, I'm just making sure. No, you know we're sponsored by. We're sponsored by. Let's get fucked up. So so notice Lou, we have that but, clap but, but down. Lewis grounded for today. Okay, Lou, Lou, Lou was Lou was invited for today. You we know heard, that. Lou yeah. was invited I invited for today. Lou for today, and and Lou was grounded for today. Lou was told. Lou, Lou was told you oh, know, that he wasn't Sean, allowed to participate with today. You made him break his promise because I said, "I need you both there because I just passed my boards and it's my thirtieth birthday today." Hey, Doctor Caitlin, and you, she is thirty. And you both need to be there. And Sean was like, yes, let's go. <laughs> you made him break his promise. Wonderful, wonderful. You know why? Because I care about you more than he does. Let's talk about heels, heels in okay. pro wrestling. Lou has currently what we call Xbox heat. So uh, Philadelphia, and, and I'm going to get into some wrestling talk here. Thank you, Wheatley, for this podcast. Lou has what we call Xbox Heat. Uh, Xbox, Sean Waltman is a great worker. Yes, TX, blah, 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 blah. But there became a point in time when the crowd turned on Sean. And, and I know Sean. We weren't, we weren't great friends or anything like that. But I knew Sean uh, back in the early ECW. Not this Sean. Not this Sean. No, like no, this no, Sean. no, 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 no. Sean Waltman. No, Sean Waltman. The athletic with hair, charisma, bada wait, bing. Wait, anyway, if I turn my balls to you, can you just punch them directly? How would I know the difference? I thought they were wow. oh, anyway. I love so, this man. X Pac had garnered what we called X Pac heat, meaning they're not booing you because you're a bad guy, they're booing you because you're a douchebag. And they don't like you. I'm right. sorry. We Was definitely blew poli- Luke. Man, he's let, me, let me get more politically incorrect instead of douchebag. You're an a hole. Like you're 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 yeah, but you're a douchebag. When it comes to wrestling, Philly loves their heel. F and A. They love a bad guy, which is where again Philly is such a dichotomy because always have loved the bad guy. Doctor in- Caitlin. In their major league sports, yeah. NFL, MLB, they NHL. I it's really had to think about Harper's NBA. Harper's a babyface on the fields, but he's a heel to everyone but else. But they love a babyface in their sports. They love that guy that wears the their comeback. heart on their sleeve. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. always want them to yeah, win they, at some They point. want that comeback. They want that babyface. Whether he's going it's, to it's or not. It's feeling. It's right. And when it, when it, but like Lou but, has X-Pac heat. Yes, but when it comes to wrestling, they love a heel. They love a guy who everyone else in the industry hates. I agree. And we love to hate them. And we hate to love them, but we love to hate them. We want to Piper. simultaneously Piper boo back and in cheer. Day awesome. In Philadelphia. Ric Flair. R- Ric Flair. It's the exact same thing. Roddy Piper, Ric Flair are probably two of the most prominently like, Jimmy just like, like people just looked at them as yes. like these are the Don guys. Morocco. Everyone when hates these guys them. were still have heels. a hot rod shirt somewhere. Every, everyone else, every other city that they're gonna go to on tour 
hates them and they love to boo them and we hate to boo them First, but, and we love can to I hate back them to baseball real quick yeah 1993 phillies macho row dude okay. i Ooh, love oh, inky right? everybody pete Incavili. inky i just okay. said inky, as, yeah. as i said because some, italian butcher so, so, sometimes me and you think alike but but in other in other cities he was kind of chastised and in one dimension all that type of stuff he came here Fucking Inky in that year, ninety three. Tim Eisenreich. Listen, listen, Eisenreich Kevin was Stocker, Tourette syndrome. Oh Everybody's God. fucking making fun of him because of that. Dutch. And we fucking oh god. Listen, you know. 1993, I was a senior in high school, okay? And 1993 was a magical year for me. It, it was, you know, obviously Veterans Stadium. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little story. It's going to take a minute, Doctor. So just, I wasn't just born until 1994. I, I know, so let me put that in perspective the for you. I graduated high school. So, so 1993. Phillies make this run for for the playoffs, yeah. and sixty five thousand people filled uh, Veterans Stadium at the time, and they had twenty one thousand season ticket holders. So Dave when the playoffs Hollins. come along, okay, when well, the playoffs came along, they 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 put out a lottery for for the playoffs to get tickets, and there's 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 a little fat. Sean Sean Thumper McGranahan sitting there, senior at Archbishop Bryan High School, saying, "I want to." I want those tickets. So they had a contest or, or like a lottery. You had to send in postcards to the Phillies, okay? And whoever, like the postcards came in, they got received. And if you got the postcard, if, if yours got awarded, you were allowed, and it doesn't even like guarantee this. Guaranteed. You were allowed to buy the tickets, yeah. okay? Sean sent in 352 postcards. I couldn't afford the stamps this, in 1993. The stamps at I the was time broke. Amen. Wait, wait. This, this I'd sta- rather just buy tickets. The, sta- oh, the, sta- the stamps at the time for postcards, because I knew there was a difference. Between, I found this yeah. out. There was a difference between postcard stamps and, and letter stamps. Postcard stamps at the time were 19 cents each. Okay. So I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm, I'm going like, like fucking go, going and buying, buying these stamps, um, the stamp, stamp, postcard stamps. I won twice. Oh, you weren't supposed to win twice. You were only supposed to win once. I won twice. So I sat there and got, and, and they happened to be like they they let you into the the lottery for certain games. Okay, so okay, you won this one, so you could buy game one and game four and game six. Okay, you won this one, you could buy two and three and four, whatever it was. But I won two sets of tickets. Then the day that the individual game tickets went on sale okay so that's anybody who didn't enter the lottery and also we have these individual game tickets let's sell them off okay i went to in philadelphia it's not like private school or anything like that but i went to archbishop Bryan, which is a catholic high school it's a, it just meant i paid for a different yeah. kind of education than the, than the public schools okay instead of a rival oh is yeah. this a bonner thing or uh, uh. oh no hey Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Ah, this is the last so, time that so you'll be seeing Sean so, so, Bonner. I'm O'Hara, O'Hara. baby. O'Hara, okay, okay. So we, 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 we beat you a couple times. So, 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 How many state titles so do you I, have? Then, then I went to, then I went to um, the vet the day the, uh, the single game tickets went on sale. I cut school. I cut school. Oh, my God. This, Third this, grade. This little chubby fat kid from Northeast Philadelphia cut school it was the craziest what thing a ever rebel i was such a rebel i was like oh my lord he did that i didn't tell anybody i did it and, and i cut school and i waited in line a and i got another set of say your okay? parents i silent called my dad rebel. who lived in harrisburg at the time i said dad i need some money i guess before venmo <laughs> and that type of shit i said dad i got an opportunity to buy these tickets and i and it's gonna be a good thing my dad sent me some money so i, I didn't have money fucking dope so i bought these things I had tickets for every fucking game at Veterans Stadium during that playoff run wow. against that 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 culminated with the loss to Tor- um, Toronto Blue Jays. But anyway, so I was I was still eating ramen noodles because um, I was struggling. I was popular. Well, thanks for sharing. All I mean, I'm, I'm all in high school. At least you were married and struggling. I'm walking around and people and are like, struggling. Sean, I, I heard you got anything. tickets. You looking for a date Friday night? The lights would flicker. I'm like, you know? I pay the bill. And, and I was picking and choosing who I wanted to hang out with that weekend. You and, never you know, chose who you were hanging you're, out you're, with. You're, you're absolutely Let's right. not get crazy. In my dream, I was. Okay? Thank you. But at the, end, at the end of the day, like, you know, it, it was great. It was a great fucking time. And and that whole experience around the 93 Phillies with Dykstra and Inky Dude, and Dalton and What a Croc, great time. It was the best time what ever. What a great time. Because it was the, and this is where you I'm going to bring it all it. back. It was the ultimate Philadelphia team 
because there was a bunch of never was and never have beens that got put together that sat there and said, let's fucking do this. And the problem right now, when you talk about the Phillies, okay, it's a bunch of guys who we proved ourselves a couple of years ago. So we got a check. And half of them okay? weren't even on the team then. Exactly. You got the Eagles with people who were given $50 million a year contracts because they had one good year. But again. And then it's again, well, I'm good enough. So so, so all of a sudden, like, I, I should get that. So let me circle so some of those people back. The 2017 Eagles were blue collar still, no matter what anybody wants to ask. They were this blue is collar, exactly what but I they want to go blue collar. hometown I want to go 93 Phillies. I want to go highlight of my life. That doesn't involve family. Not going to lie. It involved my oh. brother-in-law. <laughs> Love you, Michael. You'll never see this, and you'll never call me family, but you're a doctor, buddy. Doctor yeah, I don't know, because Eileen's going to see this, and I love you. No, no, straight up. Uh, it was opening day. It was um, me, Michael, Larry Galone, and... One other person, we go to the opening day Phillies, I think Dawn hit two homers, it's the Chicago Cubs. And, and I'm bringing it back to the Wheatley thing, I'm not trying to say, talk about me. And it was the first time that I ever got recognized in Philly going, yo! Steve, you're wonderful! And I was just like, hey, um, what did you say? Hoping that everyone I was with would hear it again. And they're all like, my friends were all like, did you hear they were like as cool, like as excited as I was. Back to Philly heels, not talking about blah blah blah. ECW. Blue collar. That's why they loved. That's why I was so, so popular. Joel Goodhart. Joel Goodhart went out of business January 18th. The big final show was gonna be uh Nature Boy Buddy Rogers against my very good friend Nature Boy Buddy Landell. And it was gonna Why be. Why was there three Nature Boys? Um, what was the Nature Boy thing? Because there was Nature Boy Buddy Rogers, he, Nature Boy Buddy Lendell, there was Nature Boy Rick Flair. Pe- so was, obviously, ev- like everyone really loved trees. Like hippies? <laughs> like, everyone no, loved trees no, and no, no, they loved if you bleach watched, blondes. If you watch their promos, talk. none of them were hippies. Like it's not no. like it was like I don't know. Oh no, no, no. None of them were hippies. Buddy Rogers, who also lost the, the WWF championship in 54 seconds to a bear hug, or I'm sorry, a backbreaker to Bruno San Martino, who's one of the true... How bad was Bruno? I mean, he was, and he was one of the baby faces I remember that Philly loves. When I, when I, was, when I was like like back in like the late 80s, early 90s, Bruno when, was when the, the rock and roll WWF 60s, thing was 70s. going on. Um, and I, was, I watched Bruno come to the ring with his, with his cauliflower ears and, and, and he'd get into it, everybody. I loved that shit. Well, I loved being, I, 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 Bruno was the man to me. I know Hulk, I you got all of that. Stage, you got Rock, so like, you got Austin, you got, uh, you got the Cena era. Cena calling Roman Reigns the goat is also just John Cena being the ultimate businessman for I, WWE. I think it's that, but I don't think it's also like a tip of the cap to a man who, for Roman Reigns, Come on, dude, has say been it. through say it. multiple health and issues. And people forget. Cancer. That man forget. beat cancer. He had cancer and in the his ring. body. And survived He's cancer. He's always and came stayed back to the ring. Physical, and he knew he. I'm going the with my family. Not more people are tipping their cap to him I agree. for that. But he's not the goat. Is, he's not the goat. He, he might not be the goat, but he is the ultimate people role like model. People like Bruno, people like Backlund, people like Hogan, people like. Uh... Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question here. Well, wait, let, me, let me finish that thought. Those guys were on the road 300 days a year and some days doing two two shows a week. Like, as you knew, my band used to right. be. They'd, they'd be like, oh, how's your band playing 10 shows this week so, for seven days? It's because I'm playing three happy hours. But, okay, so let me ask this. Yeah. What defines a GOAT? Because the greatest of all time, is it nah. the, the person who can do three shows a day? Or is it the person who comes back from or who's a selling debilitating... Or Or who's getting the crowd. A debilitating Bruno, illness that kills Bruno probably... Bruno Drew, nah, I don't want to say depression era, because he didn't. But Bruno do great money in Madison Square Garden. I forget 80-something sellouts in a row 
from this Italian American who promoted himself as being an Italian American. The ultimate babyface, the ultimate, if- and uh, who I got to uh, have a uh, a distant relationship with, and so proud because because that's who I grew up watching. Wait a second, though. Uh, I know where we're going with this, and, and I don't even know where our time is. I'm not seeing our time on the clock. We got I 16 talk, hours. I want to talk about Philly. Clock, right? I want to talk about Phillies and heels. Bruno was always cheered in Philly. Always, <laughs> always cheered in Philly. As he puts well, the wait, clock on. So you weren't even born. Off, kids. You probably heard us watching the video. Like my debut in ECW. So ECW... TWA was the Tri-State Wrestling Alliance. Joel hey, went out of, can, can, Joel went out of business Dave January 18th. How about founding of ECW? Yeah, and Joel went out of business January 18th. And on that day, Bob Ortiz and I and Larry Winters decided to continue. Right. We were going to start a new company. Uh, we needed a money mark, and that's what they're called in wrestling, is a money mark. Todd, don't forget that, Todd. Um, so we had to bring in Todd Gordon. Todd. Uh, Todd, don't forget Todd. that you were a money mark, and that's why you were bought in. You take all the credit, but just the hell with you. So anyway, February 25th, we come up the stairs. Myself, Todd, Bob Ortiz. Larry didn't come up because Larry was working a match. I was coming up as Stevie Wonderful. We come up. We're playing the old TWA music. I go, shut that shit off. And then we have a new sheriff in town, and we play my my new song, and it's going to be the new ECW theme. And I get into the ring. We all get in the ring, and we're like, we're, we don't know if we're going to get booed. or re- They walk off, and I'm in the ring by myself, and I want to be the ultimate heel. I know these people. I know everyone who's sitting in the stands. Michael Jack Sports Bar. February 25th, oh, 1992. Shit. Dennis Brennan. And Dennis I knew everybody. City, Michael Jack. And I couldn't, there was just no way I was going to get over as a heel because you they were the knew. Ultimate baby face. I was the ultimate baby face because I started this company. I started ECW. You were. I the... fucking, I, I love you, Bob Ortiz. You didn't name it. I named ECW. Uh, and. Larry Winters, we needed to bring in. No, 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 I love that. (laughs) But no, no, but Philly, and it's not about me. Philly loves a heel. So that night, our very first match, Stevie Richards, which I, you know, I'm already the Stevie, and we, you know, we're trying, we don't care. Jimmy Gennetti, you know, a 20 minute draw, and they're taking bumps outside the ring, bing, bang, boom, done. And now we're bringing at least Jimmy Gennetti back on uh, May 3rd. But Philly, we put in two baby faces, and everyone loves, oh, I'm not playing this. Let's just pass <laughs> the Ducci from the left. Yeah, I was just yeah. trying to help you. I mean, if it was the Ducci, it would be Kayla's smoking. So Gas masks. So anyway, Philly loves a heel. Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. Um, Vader. Like, was my guy. I worked for WCW. No, duh, because he named one of our dogs after Vader. <laughs> He's the only man that ever ran you me know, out of a I, dressing room. I grew up going, oh, Vader? Was he named after Darth Vader? And me and my little six-year-old self would go, no, Big Van Vader. Right. Philly loves the heels. He was that Leon White was a 450-pound mastodon. Yeah. Who was agile. And 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 if he didn't hit you hard, he you might felt survive. like he would take blame. Yeah, but he would take blame. So the next punch is coming harder. And I worked with somebody he worked with, um, you know, Otto Vance. Thank you, doctor. When I got trained back in the early '80s in Austria to be a pro wrestler, where Otto Vance was the baby face of his country because he was the promoter. But Philly, Philly, Philly loves the heels. We don't have a heel. Sean, we were talking earlier, and again, now we're wrestling. I gave a little to uh, Wheatley. Do you remember an ultimate dirty Philadelphia Eagles player that we would kill for? And his name even was Dirty. Dirty water, strong safety, see? I'm just as nice as I want to be. 200 pounds, I still am bold. Oh, I can't remember. Andre Dirty, dirty waters. waters, baby. Oh, my Lord. 
a heel, a heel, a heel. absolutely, That's absolutely, Philly loves. So, so, so we did. I remember um, back in the day when you know it, it actually started. I think with the Super Bowl shuffle, where every team Chicago like Bears this, like, rap or something. Yeah, like that. eighty-six. And I remember it was like the nineteen eighty-nine or ninety Eagles where they did the um, they did their own album. Oh God! And that was a part of um. Buddy's watching you. Oh my God! He's watching you. He's watching boys. He's watching. <laughs> Philly fans are too. Talk about the ultimate heel in wrestling. You don't even. But Dirty Waters. Dirty Waters is Brian buddy. Dawkins before Brian Dawkins is Brian Dawkins. He Dawkins. And way yeah, Brian was Dawkins dirtier. was way more talented. B Dawk was a better player. Oh, absolutely. And not, and not as but Dirty Waters. Dirty Waters. Like and Dirty Waters. If you beat him, if you beat him, he didn't just sit there and get you in the next play he got you in the end of that play and you were feeling it and yeah. and and nowadays it's 2024 didn't he almost technically die of cte listen god bless all those guys who put Remember the brian sale because i i i listen. wrestling wrestling never talks about i had a friend my I, friend I, who oh. was killed by her husband in a famous murder. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Down yeah. Atlanta. But that was CTE as, as well, yeah. though, bro. Listen, listen. And I, I got a friend the other day, okay? A, a guy who I work with who's, who's a great man. Lou. He's uh, got CTE. Has, he can't he remember his name. Lou, Lou doesn't put enough effort out to put fucking CTE, okay? But I, I, have, a, uh, I, have, a fr- I have a friend who a I short. work with. His, 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 his name is Robert. He's a great fucking man. He's a great father to his sons. He'll, he'll, he'll drop, drop everything and do anything for you. And he, and he he ran into a, boat, a motorcycle accident the other day, and he showed up for work the next day thinking it was the day before. You were and, telling and, me that. And, and, and said was and he was he was like yeah I'm here for the event and I'm like dude please go home. And this is after I talked to him the day before, and he's telling me about what happened the night before when he got into this accident, and he's he's going to emergency room. I was like let me meet you. What what emergency room going to? Like 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 yeah like take care of yourself please. And the next day he was just he was just out of it, and it took him a couple of days to swing around for it, you know. And, and I'll bring this back around to our. I was going to say Sean. Off the rail. I'll, I'll, I'll bring back <laughs> to the, back, yeah. I'll bring back to the original conversation. Is the fact that like you got these guys out there that put their bodies out on the line, okay, for for the glory that could come to them, okay, and the glory that comes along with being celebrated by an entire city because nothing May will 3rd. earn you more in this city than sitting there putting yourself out and saying, "I'm here for you. I'm I'm putting my life on the line for you." Young John!